isn't it a fine morning indeed? I just love the smell of trivia in the morning, don't you? Well, don't you? Well, how many contestants are there? You're alone, by yourself. That's great. Thank you. Are you a first-time rider? Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so happy to have you back. You should be typing in your name now. Wonderful. Thanks. If you feel like buzzing, use the letter B. That's the opening bell. Loosen up your hands and get out on the floor. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. You Don't Know Jack is brought to you by The Man. I can buy and sell you. And now, here he is, the hardest working guy in trivia, your host, Guy Towers! Hey, welcome to the game. So, you got big dreams? Well, I'll try to let you down easy, okay? Let's go. What's that? A game of Jack? Now? What a capital idea. Tally ho! Hit your buzzer and snag the cat. Huh. Well, it's better than nothing. And it's gonna be called... No stocks between meals, you capitalist pig. Hey, you know how sometimes when you're eating chips, you come across one of those brown and green ones? You know, like an old drunk's toenail? Well, say you're enjoying a bag of Ruffles when you suddenly bite into a blue chip. What's so darn special about it? It's a stable and reliable chip, it's a volatile chip, it's a completely worthless chip, or it's a chip from a new growing company. Blue chips are proven strong stocks. As opposed to the green chips, which are proven to keep anyone from eating them. I feel sorry for the green chips. Tickle your butt. Ooh, pretty lame pick in there. Oh well, it's gonna be called... Capitalists love my Trump roast. Boy, that Donald Trump, he sure is a card. If Donald were a Trump card, which of these could he most likely do? Win over any card of another suit, win over any card of the same suit, win over any card, or only lose? A Trump card will usually win over any card of another suit. Well, unless, of course, it's an Armani suit. Hold that buzzer. Let's see how much cash you can get. The category is... Saving pennies in a capitalist piggy bank. Okay, do me a favor. There's this one character whose name I can't remember. You know, you know the guy. Well, when you know who I'm talking about, buzz in and type it out, okay? You know, he's a billionaire and he's a bald white guy. He appears in a Broadway musical that's also a movie, and he's seen with Punjab and Little Orphan Annie. Run with it. Type your answer and hit return. How did a man without pupils get so rich, huh? You know, five bucks says he puts on Annie's wig and prances around the room when no one else is around. All right, buzz in and set the cash value. Hungry? It's roadkill time. Smack your buzzer when you see something that connects the two clues. And don't forget to look at all the correct answers so you can guess the bonus question. All right, then, let's slip her into gear. Mail here, and Rogers from the 25th century. What's the connection here? Score. Chicken pox victims shouldn't. No one should pool players. Score. Dr. Leonard McCoy's nickname and skeleton part. Kisses and loud slaps. Pillaged things and rhymes with toot. 
for the bonus. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all yellowism for sex? Yellow tricks? Famous rich movie uncles? Slaying for money? You nailed it. Rack it up. Smack your buzzer and we'll see what dollar value you can get ready for. Wanted, female version of myself. You know, it's so hard for people who are completely obsessed with making money to find time for emotional intimacy. So, um, hey, let's look at who's advertising in the classifieds this week. Let's see. Oh, here's one. Single white male in search of single female, preferably short and Republican. Loves money as much as I do. Must be into heavy Nixon worship and business casual. Help me forget my liberal upbringing. Whose personal ad is this? Mr. Drummond, George Jefferson, Alex P. Keaton, or Chip Douglas? <laughs> Alex P. Keaton, the freakily conservative son of hippies on Family Ties. And you know, if his marriage's ratings ever start to fall, they can always have a really cute kid to bring him right back up. Hit that buzzer and let's check out the cash. And for your viewing pleasure, the Dow Jones Cheerleaders. Okay, 3,189 bucks if you can nail this one. Uh, shall we? Which Chicago sports team could most appropriately change its name to the Chicago Falling Stock Markets? Chicago Cubs, Chicago Bears, Chicago Bulls, or Chicago White Sox? A falling market is called a bear market. And a receding hairline and expanding gut is called a bear's fan. How much will this one be worth? Hit that buzzer. This one's called... Was his head really made of meat? Hey, remember the British economist Thomas Malthus and his rather unusual solution for overpopulation? If Thomas Malthus were to replace Sally Struthers in her commercials for Save the Children, which of these would be the most appropriate new name for the foundation? Eat the children, enslave the children, redistribute the children, or starve the children? Well, how would he do? Thomas Malthus was a 19th century Brit who believed the world's eventual overpopulation would be curtailed when famine killed off the poor. <laughs> uh. Hit that buzzer and let's see that cash. No, hit the beat. Well, that, uh, that sucks. Oh well, category. At least she's not selling hemp chokers. Hey, you remember that old tongue twister, seashell, seashells by the seashore? She sells, she, well. If she sells, say, shells by the seashore, what might you hear her say? Supermodels, get them while they're hot. Islands, get your islands here. Impressionist painters, two for a dollar. Or, you want moons? I've got moons. Say, shells is a country made up of islands. And it's where they sell rubber baby buggy bumpers. All right, buzz in and let's see what kind of dough you're playing for. This one will be... Bonds. James Bonds. Question, please. If you buy a U.S. Savings James Bond, which of these actors' faces will not be on the certificate? Sean Connery, Pierce Brosnan, Michael Caine, or Roger Moore? To date, Michael Caine has never played James Bond. Because, uh, let's face it, he's not cool enough because his hair's funny. How much cash we playing for? Buzz in. There was a yuppie, had a wad and doughy was his name, O-D-O-U-G-H, D-O-U-G-H, D-O-U-G-H, and then his structures fell, oh. All right, welcome to Dough. Don't forget, buzz in on the first letter of the correct answer to win the cash. If you get all five letters, you, my friend, get the cash. We're going. Stick a fork in me, I'm blank. Well done. Society is the blank crust. Nothing. Blank nut cereal. 
Category is Klondike Cat never gets his mouse. Hey, remember how that pesky mouse used to taunt Klondike Cat by saying savoir faire is everywhere? Suppose he said laissez faire is everywhere. What would he be trying to tell Klondike Cat? Come and get me. Let things alone. You can't catch me. Or I will interfere. Uh, loosely translated, laissez faire means let things alone. Of course, if Klondike heeded that advice, there'd be no show. And then what? How can we go on with our lives, huh? Tickle your buzzer and let's see how much cash... Whoa, hardly worth it, huh? Well, what can you do? This one's called... Roller skating at a tidy profit margin. Hey, remember those soft rockers air supply? Oh, yeah. Suppose the aging members of Air Supply decide to do an album called Air Supply and Demand. Which of these tracks would you not hear? Even the exchange rates are better. Every free market in the world lost in laissez-faire or the socialism that you love. Here I am, the socialism that you love. Air Supply and Demand is a principle of capitalism with a high voice and a big afro. Hit your buzzer and snag the cash. Mmm, minty. Here's your clue. On the money. And if you hit your buzzer right, you're gonna be in the money. Good luck. Let's see your final score. There it is. A wise man once said, give a man. Next week on Halloween.